So just to always give us a constant reminder of who Dolei Israel are, who are the giants among Am Yisrael are, I always like to tell a story to give people at least a little bit of an inclination of what they're dealing with. And we're not even going to go back to the times of the Gemara, to the times of the Mishnah, to the times of the Rishonim. We're actually just going to go back to just a few decades ago. At the time, this is nearly a hundred years ago, almost, I would say a little less than a hundred years ago, when Rav Vozner was only 27 years old. Rav Shmuel Vozner, Allah wa Shalom, was a giant among giants. But even when he was 27 years old in Yerushalayim, he was already recognized as a gadol and was put on the bedin. Now, 27 years old, I don't know what you were doing when you were 27 years old. Me, I was making millions of dollars, but as far as Torah is concerned, if I knew one word, that was already a miracle. Now, even if you go and you ask your average person that went to yeshiva, got a yeshiva education from, from birth, you're 27 years old, how much do you know by heart? Your average person say, well, I know some things, but what do you mean by heart? Well, how many pages of the Gemara do you know by heart? What do you mean pages? Like, how, how many Gemara? Most people don't necessarily have the fortune of knowing the Gemara that way. Why? Because there's a priority list in their life, and sometimes the Gemara is not necessarily priority number one. So when a person listens to the story, they'll understand what the priority number one was for Gedolei Israel. Purim. Purim was a special day that the Chachamim spent time with each other with after having a uh, couple of drinks and becoming elevated uh, you know happier and so on they would actually spend that time bringing out chidushim chidushim of torah chidushim of the of 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 the uh, different uh, chidushim of the torah in order to sanctify kadosh bahu's name and uh rab shmuel vozner went to visit one of the uh gdolim in the generation the av bedin at the time of Ruven Benjis. And uh, of course, older than him by many, many years, still Rav Benjis respected Rav Vosnel as an equal. And he came over to him on Purim to give him a Mishloch Manot. And already by then, Rav Benjis already had a couple of drinks and was very happy to see Rav Vosnel, the youngster, 27 years old. And as soon as he sees him, he goes, okay, yalla, now we're ready. Let's go through the Shas together. What do you mean? The whole shots? Yeah, let's go. You and me. Let's just go through the whole shots together. Where I'll tell you the uh, uh, you, uh, the Masechet. And every Masechet, you tell me. The uh, first thing you tell me is, what's the first line on the 10th page on that Masechet? Of every Masechet in the Shas. Then you tell me what's on the second line that Rashi commentary has. Then you tell me what's on the third line in the Tosfot commentary. And that way we'll go through the whole Shas together. Rav says, yeah, but it's going to take a couple of hours. Okay, so let's do it. So, of course, they sent a messenger to the house of Rav to let them know that he's going to be running late. And they start. And the eyewitnesses to this are telling the story. Without hesitation, Rav starts off, okay, Masechet Brachot. The uh, page Yud, the 10th page, first line, word for word. The second line of the Rashi commentary, word for word. The third line of the Tosfot commentary, word for word. And one of the Bachurim that was there watching this whole thing over a period of a couple of hours had the Gemarot opened, trying to see if Rav Ozner is making mistakes. And he says, throughout the entire Shas, Throughout the entire commentary by Rashi on the Shas. Throughout the entire commentary by Tosfot on the Shas. Not a single mistake. Not a single mistake. Now, an average person hears this has no idea what I'm talking about. So let me explain this in a very simple way. Just think of any book that you want. I don't know, Harry Potter book, some science book, some art book, whatever book you want. How big is the average book out there? Five, six hundred pages. Now, the average book out there, five, six hundred pages, most of them have a medium-sized print, sometimes small print, but generally speaking, they are not necessarily always going to be full of wisdom. Let's just say it uh, politely, but nonetheless, 500, 600 pages is what you have. If you're reading a Stephen King book, maybe you'll approach close to a thousand pages, but nonetheless, these are stories, these are not necessarily mental calculations. The Shas has 2,700 dapim. 
Dapim is it's almost 2700 a little less than 2700 almost 2700 Dapim what's Dapim Dapim is back and forth which means double the number you're talking about nearly 5500 pages now the Gemara the, the, the Talmud is not just 5500 pages but it's also full you have the Gemara and then you have the commentary you have the Tosfot you have the Rashi you have all the different commentaries on that page there's an actual shape a unique shape to, diff, to each page now for a person to just know the Gemara part by heart for one tractate in the Shas that's already an achievement to know the entire Shas by heart to know the entire commentary by Rashi by heart to know the entire commentary by, by the Tosfot by heart but not only that knowing it in such a fashion that he can tell you exactly where every word is first line this is what it says second line this is what it says third line this is what it says now of course you'd say yeah but this is you know long time ago it doesn't exist in the world today that's because you don't know any Chachamim you don't know any Chachamim one of the great Chachamim in our current generation that literally shows this live shows this live is Rabbi uh, Yeshua Cohen he's an extraordinary Chacham he must have gone over the Shas at least a thousand times that's what Rabbi Frank tells me at least a thousand times already 20 years ago by now maybe already 2,000 times now when he gives a shoe it's not even it's it's not even like a, 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 a fair to an average person that thinks he's smart next to him why because you have this person they somebody mentioned something in the crowd oh what about such and such it's like okay oh such a, how many times is this mentioned the Gemara and he takes up his hand and he starts flipping a paint but there's nothing in his hand well there is something in his hand we just can't see it he starts flipping oh well it's in the Gemara over here oh I see it on the top right oh it's in that tractate also on the bottom oh ah I see over here also I see it but here there was actually a printing error they misspelled the name it's on the bottom line three words before the end Th third line two, uh, two words after before the uh, begin literally giving you an exact a precise position of every single word in the Torah he knows the Shas so well and we're talking about both Shas Bavli Shas Shirushami and of course across the entire Torah he knows it to such an extent that he already tells you the number of words that are in every page things that the human mind simply cannot comprehend if it's found outside of the Torah you may find somebody that can remember a phone book by heart you may find somebody that may know a few calculations here and there but you're never gonna meet smart people like tell me never why because the wisdom of tell me is acquired spiritually it's not something that they're born with even though some of them certainly have natural born inclinations those natural born inclinations do not mature to become like this by themselves like if they did something else with their life they wouldn't even be a quarter as smart a quarter as uh, wise as they are today so here we see that when a person is in the world of heretics first and foremost they should know that in parashat bo towards the end of the parasha in chapter 12 when HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us about the korban about pesach about the uh, the Zohar, he says that uh, the uh, this is a decree of the Pesach offering no Jew who becomes a apostate may eat of it if you are a heretic you cannot be part, become part of the Leila Sedel if you're a heretic you have no share of the Leila Sedel can't be you cannot invite heretics to your Leila Sedel why that's what Torah says now of course if you're doing kiru you're trying to uh, entice people to do chuva and they're respectful you know maybe perhaps you could have uh, something to rely on but needless to say if a person as an open heretic makes fun of the Torah they're not allowed to be part of your Lela Seder even the Torah itself says that even at the time of Yetziat Mitzrayim these are the people that did not survive needless to say when a person contradicts the Chachamim of the Torah not just the ones of a thousand or two thousand years ago but even of the ones of today somebody mocks them somebody disrespects them you have no idea what you're dealing with you're not dealing with somebody that has intellect like you wisdom like you we're talking about somebody that is worlds of difference worlds of difference from where you are you may know I don't know maybe a topic that's discussed 
in some book that you have in your shelf out of the let's say I don't know 200 books that you have you may if somebody asks you a question and you read enough and you learned enough they ask you something say you know what this is probably in this book let me see and you start playing with the book a little bit and you figure out and hopefully you have enough siyat nishma you find it somewhere in the book you may know maybe the parashot the names of them you may even know them by heart you may even know them in order but if somebody says to you listen pick any book out of your shelf not not don't even pick the talmud your shelf your books the books you read the books you studied can I pick a page open any one of those books and you tell me what's written there your average person is gonna look at you like you have 16 heads what do you mean you're gonna open the book and you want me to know what's in there how would I know what's in there what do you, why would I know what's in there well you read the book so what if I read the book I don't remember who, who remembers everything that they read ah who remembers everything that they read tell me the chachamim tell me the chachamim but not just everything that they read with such precision they'll even tell you the shape of the page they'll tell you the numbers of words the printing errors and literally you see things that are unbelievable in the world of Chachamim Share it because other people need to learn too.